So today we're back in the Palazzo Guarnieri and I'm with Canadian stage director Chris Lane who has agreed to come and direct our inaugural uh, stage opera scenes in Feltre in August and uh, we thought it would be nice just to have a bit of a chat so that you get to know um, him a bit better. Chris, I understand that you started in theatre as a kid. Do you I want did. to tell me yeah. something about I, um, that? I, uh, I wasn't much of a hockey player. In Canada, you have to uh, you play hockey um, as kids. So I was doing that, and my dad realised I wasn't... Um, I wasn't terribly good at it either. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, there was a, an audition in the local paper. They needed a young actors involved in a musical. So I was uh, sent off to audition and got a part. And uh, yeah, I suppose the rest is history. So, so how old were you actually? I was, I was, this is, it was, I was either eight or nine. I can't remember. It was 1980 or 1981. I can't remember which year exactly, but. They probably and, struggled. Though. And so were you employed as an actor or a singer or both? Uh, both. I was, it was uh, actor, singer, dancer, whatever. You know. And so that's sort of... I'm just an energetic kid who was very happy to be on stage. <laughs> now you'd be put on Ritalin if you were... Possibly, <laughs> you were... yes. Drive to see it down. That's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. And then I, yeah. So did that, did you have a love of theatre before then or did that no, really fire everything? I, you know what, I remember um, <laughs> there's a, there's a, um, like a like a, um, an amusement park type thing, like Thorpe Park or something like that in Canada called Ontario Place. And I remember being there with my grandparents and a band going by a river, like on a boat on a river. And I remember breaking away and going and standing on the banks of the river and dancing along the banks of the river with them. And I think at that point they sort of knew that I a probably stage should do something theatrical. So uh, yeah, so that's sort of. How it started, and then by the time I was done high school, I'd done 30 shows of varying sizes and shapes. So you were a stage director originally. When did you start to direct opera? I, uh, in 2009 was the first time that I worked on an opera. It was um, with Opera Hall and Park in London, and uh, it was a production of Tosca. It had been, it was a fairly renowned production of Tosca too. It was set in the 1960s, and uh, I was at, they were doing a revival of it in Richmond, at this beautiful theater in Richmond, I'm um, in Southwest London. And um, the director, um, who I knew needed um, uh, an assistant director who could work with the secondary cast, alternate cast, uh, that was tricky, I <laughs> recall. Um, and yeah, so that was my first uh, trial by fire, literally. I found out about the job on a Friday and started work on the Monday. Um, walked in, they gave me the score. I hadn't seen the opera because there had been no time to so do it. So a real baptism of fire. Baptism by fire. But by the end of it, it was, um, it was, yeah, it was a hugely rewarding experience. It was, it was really cool. So many people say that actors can act, but singers can't act. And did you have any preconceptions before working with singers, or what's been your experience of um, working with singers? I mean, on the stage? I mean, we've all heard that, like that opera singers don't act and actors don't sing, and so on. I, I like to think about. Um, I like to think that we're all storytellers and um, that that's our job, is to communicate a story. And uh, people's experiences through this snippet of their life that we have the opportunity to see um, for the two hours that they mm. track across the stage that they're on. And, and I don't really think that, I mean, whilst there's different techniques for telling different stories, I think at the heart of it, um, that's what we do. So whether you're a singer or an actor or a, I think at the end of the day we're all just storytellers. So that's kind of how I approach the work, is that you need to understand um, the state of being that this person is in. You need to understand the, uh, uh, the sort of uh, the, the, the gravitas of the situations that they're in, how that affects them physically, and then transpose that into 
what comes out of your mouth, whether it be song or text or for dancers even just how that expresses itself physically and poetically through their bodies. I mean, I think if you've got the story at the heart of what you're doing, you can't go wrong. And so I don't know that, I don't believe that singers can't act. Um, I think that there's been a lot of focus with, um, in opera, and, and rightly so, on vocal technique. And I think that sometimes that takes, that has, an, and I think it's changing slightly, but I think that has taken, um, taken the majority of training programs and there has been less focus on, if you say, as you will, acting, if you will. But I don't think it's, it's that they can't. I think it's just that possibly the balance isn't quite right where training is concerned. In the same way that if you go to a, 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 an acting conservatoire, um, the balance isn't on learning how to sing. They'll do their token bits of singing in a, yeah. in a musical at the end of their training, but that's, that's it. I suppose what I wanted to ask you about was your process then, but at the beginning of that little bit that mm -hmm. we've just spoken Sorry, about, that <laughs> kind of, you started to talk about your process then. Yeah. Because for me, when I'm working with singers, we're in a process the whole time, and so that you can be on, on a continuing mm -hmm. developmental arc, yeah. if mm -hmm. you like. Um, by way of process, uh, I think, again, I think it changes and it's dependent on the story you're telling, okay. number one, because, I mean, working on an opera, the process can be different than working on a classical play or what have you. Um, I think some fundamentals that I work with are um, uh, making sure that you're in your body, that you, you're, you're comfortable in your skin, that you, um, that you understand how to just come and be present in a space. And that's one of the things, especially with, with people that are training, that I like to work towards a great deal, is making sure that that presence and that vulnerability and authenticity exist in the space, because that's when you're gonna get the best work. Um, I think textual understanding is really important. You have to know what you're saying. And this goes across uh, storytelling, um, uh, mediums, be it opera or uh, classical theater or, you know, new writing or what have you, you have to know what you're saying. You've got to know what these characters are experiencing. You have to understand the dynamics of relationships and how human beings work in those environments. And when you do that, that can be enhanced by imagination. And I think that once you have those things in place, everything just lifts because you then add the words in the music if you've got that luxury of having that secondary bit of information. It's not just words, it's, it's music. And then, I mean, extending into opera and so on, you have these massive orchestras and all the other textures that come in, you have so much more to draw on, and then it just lifts you. But I think, yeah, being in your body, being present, um, fully understanding what you're doing, to what you're saying and how you're relating to people and then really diving into your imagination. And that goes, I would say from what you're saying, for me that goes to whether you're working with somebody who's a young singer, yeah. somebody who's had more experience or professional, yeah. that idea goes across the whole spectrum of It does, what absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it was interesting because my first, um, working on Tosca, they had incredibly skilled um, actor singers, essentially, um, and uh, they they were brilliant. And it was because it was set in nineteen sixties Italy. Um, there was a, there was an authenticity about the body language. They there was a lot of work again, uh, working again, sort of um, what you might call stereotypic opera physicality, because it had to sit within the realm of something modern, mm -hmm. um, and yet still have, um, allow the, the performers access to correct alignment and posture and all of that stuff. So that was, it was, it was tricky. Um, my next opera job was, I mean, I was saying this last night to you, that um, I've been pretty blessed with my experiences of opera, because outside of Holland Park, all of my work in opera 
has been at the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. And my first project there um, was Manolesco, um, directed by Jonathan Kent. Um, and it was starring uh, Jonas Kaufman and Christina Opelais. And both, I mean, talk about a project. <laughs> and like, oh, okay, this is, what, this is the way it works. Um, but on two occasions, there was um, the production, whether you like it or loathe it, um, uh, Christina was, was having, had to sort of do this um, very sexy dance and very scantily clad, she was very scantily clad for it. And um, they were worried about, about uh, just how, how to approach that with her. And one of the first things out of her mouth when they started talking about the concept, she's like, I'm an actress, I'll do whatever. Um, let's just, let's do it, let's see how it goes, I'm an actress. And I was kind of like, oh wow, this is, this is brilliant. That's, I wasn't necessarily expecting that from her. And then I remember there was a very long, I mean it was probably an hour and a half conversation with Giannis and Jonathan and Christina and so on um, around Act 3 and the idea of the threat that the environment posed. And Giannis was saying um, that uh, he, he didn't feel threatened by the environment. And he was asking for like where the threats were and interrogating the scene for that, the, the sort of, um, the violence and, the, and the, the danger. And he was saying, look, as an actor, I have to, I have to sing these notes for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I can't go there. He goes, I can go there and I can sing them, but it's going to be hollow. I'm paraphrasing, by the way. <laughs> but I, you can go there, but it'll be hollow if there isn't a reason. And I need that threat. So where's the threat? Because as, as an actor, it, the character has to live in this environment. I think for myself and any singer that's ever studied technique and then you get on stage, unless you have that sort of background of stage work, mm -hmm. you know, in, in England, the amateur, you know, musicals or GNS or yeah. most singers, they say, oh, the minute, oh, I get on stage and my technique goes out the window. And that shouldn't necessarily, if it's approached in the right way, that may be a very short-term thing, but it should, you yeah. know, one should still be able to be well, I think physically that expressive and communicate and sing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's How funny. How do you I, deal I, with that? I've worked, I've worked a lot in drama schools. Um, I've worked for Trinity College of Music with their um, post-grad opera singers. Um, and I think it's an inevitability when you go into rehearsal that your technique is going to kind of fall apart for a little bit. Because you've learned a language and a skill set that has been sitting there in its sort of pristine, yeah. uninterrupted form, and then and suddenly, and then it, that is being you're 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 expected to have that, and then go into this thing over here that is a completely new dynamic, and yeah, it's going to fall apart. I mean, it happens with everybody, and it doesn't. Uh, musicals. I mean, I was just, I've been working on a. Um, a new musical version of Sherlock Holmes in the first two weeks of workshops that we did. Everybody came in and they were really excited and it all just fell apart in places, but that isn't a bad thing. That is people coming to grips with how they're meshing their technique with what's being asked. And then you find this new way of linking those things together and then it just becomes clockwork. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't... I mean, if it's falling apart in performance and the That's technique doesn't hold up, then my suggestion would be you need to go back and embed that training. But um, yeah, it, it, it's inevitable. It's you're 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 going to miss notes. You're you're going to forget words. You're going to do that because you have you're learning another thing, set of demands that have to marry with that technique. And that rehearsal process is really about how you. Fine. I mean, as a performer, I remember that. Mm. You, you sing things like crap and you just forget lines and things just wouldn't work, but then you get into a rhythm with it. And, and it goes together eventually. It just, and that's what rehearsals are for, and that's what tech weeks are for, where you start to really, you stop playing with it. Mm.
I mean, the whole process of rehearsing is, I always like to start with this, the idea of just creating compositional material that we can play with. And I love it when actors bring, um, bring stuff to the room. Because as a director, I feel my job is to shape the play that's in the room. And not play as in like the text, or but mm. the, the absolute playing that we do in the space. Because that's, that's when good stuff comes. I don't have all the answers. I set the rules for the world, and then I let people go play in them. Be it the actors, or the lighting designers, or the set designers, the you know, musicians, etc. And then I sit back and shape that, and then make sure the, the rules are being adhere to, and if the rules don't work, then you adjust the rules a little bit, and, and that's when it becomes a collaborative art form, which is, which is this at its best. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice to hear you just chat and free associate, if you like, and just yeah. think through, because it's nice to know what the singers can expect a little bit. But this is probably what you can expect, yeah. I So we're doing this in microcosm, really, because we have a week, we do, and yeah. we're then going to stage some scenes and for yeah. performance yeah. Um, in less than a week, in fact. Yeah. Um, Three days or something. So, um, but I think it would be great if you could do some one-to-one -one work mm. with people, mm. yeah. perhaps on their characterisation. Yeah, or, absolutely. I know. I'd love to do some imagination work with them as well, because I think that imagination is such an underrated... And I would say, if you're coming on this program, uh, spend some time um, without your phones getting bored in advance of it. Learn your, you know, just imagine, play, get your brains working, get, get your imaginations charged up and t turned on. Um, read some books, get, practice this process of being visual, um, because that, that's the game, really. I mean, at the end of the day, regardless of the medium that you're working in, our job is to go out there and make people think that we're somebody that we're not. And that adage, seeing is believing, is never more appropriate than in this type of situation, because if I, as an audience member, if I see you as a performer, believing what you're doing, and I don't care if that's just in an empty space, mm -hmm. I'm going to believe that you see it. And if you can actually see it, your job is kind of like to go into a space and throw up a, like a, an imaginary sort of holodeck like you get in Star Trek and go and play in it. Well, I would say that and I, yeah, well. <laughs> where we are is a complete God-given mm, space because we've just, been, uh, we've just been in the Emperor's apartments right, next yeah. door, which are extraordinary, and every room in the palazzo has the most extraordinary art and furniture yeah. and architecture. I mean, there's a stunning glass chandelier right here that you'll see. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I'm staring down at the, like, into this, the most ornate... Like set of apartments, I think I've ever seen. I mean, we could stage Mano Lesco right in this room, couldn't we? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> or Tosca, or uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, endless yeah, things yeah. I can think of. What's your impression about where we're going to be working? Um, I, I want to, I want to move here. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, and and I mean, shamefully, this is my first trip to Italy. Um, it, but it won't it, be your last. Oh, it won't be my last, and I have to say it's probably the best. Um, yeah, the best way to, to experience Italy. Um, it's. I mean, the, the town is brilliant. It's a town village. I mean, it's just so small and beautiful and ancient and. Uh, and we haven't even gone in the theatre yet. Have oh we? no! And the, yeah, apparently not. Just from the photo. So the the theatre here next door is um, a complete copy of La Fenice and it's absolutely exquisite so that's another place that hopefully we'll be working in and certainly we'll be... If well I mean if, no, if nothing else I'm sure we'll be going in yes. for a tour. Certainly. So uh, you'll, you'll see. But yeah Feltre is, um, is amazing. It's, it's brilliant.
can you just say something about, you said to me, flash mob opera, and I went, okay, fine, what do you mean by that? I, I, I don't know, I mean, I, I, I mean, again, permission is being granted and all. Um, the, 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 this little, this, this town is, it has so many nooks and crannies, and I mean, just, just outside here, we're on the, um, the piazza, and it's just uh, this lovely big open space surrounded by mountains and so on, and there's the people walking through it all the time. It's just crying out to have and somebody sing it. Yeah, and it, I mean, why not just wander down into the streets and sit down and have a coffee and then have something that we can start singing, you know what I mean? And just for a minute and a half of something and then just disappear and wander off, you know? Well, I'm very excited by that the prospect. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, Don't hold me to that. <laughs> um, I think we're, you know, we're, look, we're both looking forward to it, as very much, very everybody much. else involved. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's a nice sort of preamble into hey, just, think. we could sit here and chat for hours, couldn't we? We could do, yeah, but I think we need to get outside and find some places exciting. to go. <laughs> to <see. laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway. Um, yeah, hope to see you in the summer. See you in August.